This is Ben McClintock and Enoch Moore of DefendingUtah.org. And we are back on KTalk Radio, AM 630, k-talk.com, with the Naked Truth segment of the Liberty Lineup, where we think right and wrong, not right and left. Don't forget to subscribe to the Defending Utah YouTube channel. You can also find us on Spreaker, iTunes, and iHeartRadio. We have an, a lawyer for the Utah Association of Counties. His name is Mark Ward, <laughs> and he's made a provocative statement. Let, let's play the statement because that's not word for word, but that was definitely how he's coming off. Well, okay, so. let's go listen to this then. And so, uh, Enoch's going to cue that up. So let's kind of give some preference or some background, uh, background to what's yeah. going on. Um, earlier in the year, the uh, state legislature passed HB 276, which was a bill. It was um, – can you recall the name on the, the official name of the bill? But it, it created the, the – The Lands the, Management Act. Yeah, Utah Lands Management Act, which created the new bureaucracy, the Division of Land Management, which is a replacement for the Bureau of Land Management. But it's got even more powers – Right. Then the BLM. More powers. So the, the BLM has to usurp their powers and pretend they have powers. Right. The this DLM will actually have the powers that the BLM are currently pretending they have. Right. That's the big difference. And then one of the things it did was it stripped power away from the sheriff as well. And that was a huge thing is it made um, the DLM, this new Department of Land Management, the superior authority over any policing agency in the state on, on what was deemed public lands. Right, and in the areas of wilderness, there are caveats, and they play word games, right. though, a little bit. But in the area of public lands, and so at Defending Utah, we had came out with an article that went completely viral, and, and thousands of people called the governor's office and said, veto this bill, because we showed that they were taking away the power of the sheriff. Now, if you've been paying attention at all to what's going on in this country, then you may have realized that um, what a lot of people saw, the sheriff was the last line of defense— for your natural rights. He's the person that you have delegated your authority to defend your life, liberty, and property to. And there was always this this uh, sort of safety net we felt of when the federal government totally reaches outside their bounds and takes power they don't have, at least the sheriff has the, has the will use his authority to protect my rights. Mm-hmm. And so when people realized that power is being taken away, that didn't sit well with people, and and then the the, uh, the politicians come out and say, "You don't know how to read English. You we you you the, the sheriff retains his power except in these circumstances." Well, that's exactly so. What when we said. come back from this break, Ben and Enoch and Sherilyn Eager will actually play a clip. We'll play the clip yeah. uh, from this attorney from the Utah Association of Counties. Well, we are all standing, for sure, here on the Liberty Lineup radio show, standing for ideas and principles that in some cases are long lost uh, in the annals of history. But in this most important election of our lifetime, (laughs) we are uh, approaching this. Sarcasm. uh, Okay. Uh, But anyway, this is Cheryl and Eager with Ben... McClintock and Enoch Moore from Defending Utah, and we are about to hear directly from the lawyer for the Utah Association of Counties and just what he thinks about the importance of government in our lives. And this is, again, a reference to HB 276, the bill that took away more power from the sheriff, that there was such an outcry about this bill that they had an, really an emergency meeting to, to prop up and use propaganda it was actually at this meeting. I, we'll get the audio of that some other time, but uh, where the Spencer Cox was asked if they would, if the governor would veto the bill, and his response was, "Well, he can't veto the bill without the uh, this bill sponsor's permission," which shows you how they're just buddy buddy and they talk and, right. "Hey, Joe, should I veto your bill? No, I like my bill. <laughs> Leave it alone." <laughs> so. So at this meeting, we've got a bunch of different government reps, and there was a question uh, presented to uh, to the panel there that it was seriously just a propaganda panel because it was about the bill, and there was nobody there on the panel discussing the questions about the bill. It was all just government mouthpieces speaking about how this is the best thing since sliced bread and Jesus. Well, and all the sh- not all, but a lot of the sheriffs, most of the sheriffs in the state of Utah, showed up to this meeting to listen to it. 
Right. I think uh, some of these sheriffs were, were legitimately the concerned. To support the bill because all these sheriffs are here to support the bill. Yeah, that's kind of how the TV show kind of showed it yeah. and, and so some of the comments. I think some of them were trying to learn about it, but... Most of them had no idea what was going on. Exactly. That's the thing. Most of them didn't know what was going on. And you had, you had Mike Noel, the sponsor of the bill, his son, chiming in. The sheriff of Beaver County. And, and we actually have the clip of Sheriff Tracy. Sheriff Tracy actually said this. We have this clip. Roscoe P. Coltrane would say? I don't even know who that is. Never mind. Okay. Um, Sheriff Tracy said, we don't have authority to defend the Constitution. We only have the power that the legislature gives us. Okay, th- that's the attitude Sheriff Tracy had, of, and that is um, Utah County. But here's, here's what the attorney said, because the, the discussion was, well, what are you going to do with these lands? And you know, court, the Founding Fathers had the principle of private land ownership in this nation where the government did not own the vast majority of the land. And and people were starting to say, are you just going to switch socialist national government for a socialist state government? Yeah. And they s- basically said, absolutely, yes. And you better believe in it. Otherwise, you're an anarchist and tyranny. You love tyranny and evil. So here's but, yeah. here's the clip. Okay. Okay. I, so, have a, I have a substantive response to some of what you, you raised, sir, about the DLM. The DLM. Okay. You, you may or may not agree with this, but this is where the counties and the legislature and the governor's office plant their flag in the ground, and it's this. And I'm sorry if you disagree with this, because I don't know what else to tell you. But Utah... Okay, I could probably pause and comment on this video the whole way through, but and I'll try not to do that. But he says, this is where we plant our flag, and we're putting our foot down. So this statement he's going to make, this is their bottom line. The lawyer of the Utah Association of Counties, which is the Agenda 21 regionalized government. So this is where they're planting their flag. Utah is unique among the 50 states. This pushback to get the lands back, the other 49, we're, we're unique on this, and we ought to celebrate that. And nobody's looking for a pat on the back, but we ought to take a deep breath and count to 10 backwards every now and then just to see the forest of the trees of what's happening here. That's number one. Number two, Utah continues its audacity by actually thinking to prescribe a management scheme for these lands, the for these all right. 38 million acres of lands that come back. How wonderful we are, because we dared think of a new bureaucracy. A new scheme. A scheme. To manage our land. The audacity of our scheme is so wonderful, and my flag (laughs) is planted here. Okay. We haven't even gotten to the good parts yet. This is just him. (laughs) This is just him making fun of his silliness. Okay. That's also very audacious, and it's very good, and people ought to count to ten backwards and take a deep breath at least once a day and celebrate that fact. Oh, really? Celebrate. They should. Okay. Party at my house. We're going to count to 10 backwards and have, and have some lunch and, and celebrate. The audacity of the bureaucracy scheme. The audacity of Agenda 21 lawyers. <laughs> they should pause and think about the audacity. That, that people talk about the audacity of hope. Look at, the, uh, look at the wonderful audacity of what Utah's doing here. We're trying to get the lands back, and we're so bold as to think that we can legislate a process for managing those lands. We ought to celebrate that fact. Okay, now he's going to come over to the Over and over again. Celebrate it. Uh, every day. Wait, 10, <laughs> 9, 8. I'm counting I'm backwards. Didn't he say that? It's not, we, didn't, we didn't replay that. He just kept on saying the audacity. Right. Audacity. Celebrate. Count to 10 backwards. Uh, okay, now he, he, here comes the good stuff. Okay. Ready? Here's, here's where he says we are all powerful. Deal with it. Listen to this. Now I'll come to the core of what I want to say. Inherent the, the bedrock philosophy of this is that the states are sovereign. This is the United States. We should always refer to our government in the plural. It's not a singular monolithic authority. It's the states. But when I hear rhetoric like this that implies the state can't be trusted either, how, the state can't be trusted? How dare you imply that the state, the federal government can't be trusted. We know that. We're on your side. We hate federal tyranny, but you don't trust me? That is 
That is unacceptable. How? You have to trust the state, even though they raised gas tax, they raised your property tax, they make you get more training to be a hairdresser than to be an EMT. They send SWAT teams when you uh, to the wrong address. They tase <laughs> you if you don't get your tags registered. Okay, it gets better. I'm sorry. We have to plant our faith in the state of Utah. Yes, sir, there I has to be... faith in the state of Utah. Your faith belongs in the state. Do not have any competition to no. the religion of, of the, the great state. abominable state of Utah. <laughs> a DLM. If there's no DLM, if there's no management structure, what do you have? You have chaos. You have anarchy. You have the absence of law, which is the most un-American thing there is. You have to have a structure. And that structure has to revolve around the sovereign state of Utah. Wow. Sherilyn, you're just wiggling around. you got to say something. I know. Okay, so we have a sovereign state. We get that. However, where's the sheriff in this and where's the county? And we have a total um, lapse or, or a gap in governance between the state, the state legislature, and the local counties and the local cities and towns. There's a total uh, uh, lack of, of any balance of power. And so what's happening here... Well, you're an anarchist, obviously, because you dared to question the state. Well, the state... Okay. You must put your faith in the state. The state... Are you doing... Kyle. The, you're do, yeah, I was going to say, <laughs> you're doing the Hitler thing. I know. Okay. Uh, who was it who they said did that? Oh, yeah, Laura Ingram apparently did Heil Hitler at the yeah. convention. Okay, really. Anyway, but we, we have a problem because we don't have checks and balances from the state to the local county and even the the city and town. And that's a problem that happened with state constitutions. And so that's another topic altogether. But it's allowed the state government to take a lot of control that isn't theirs. And so I guess their opinion is that anybody below us are just anarchists if we want to claim that we have any sovereignty on the local level. If you don't want the DLM, which has the unelected authority according to the bill to write and enforce laws and have its own private court system if you don't believe in that according to the state you're an anarchist you know it's it's a great thought to get our land back take it away from the federal tyranny we get that and we all believe in stopping federal tyranny Right. There's and nobody that would be stronger <clears throat> about state sovereignty and nullification than the people sitting in this room Right. however there is so much more to this story, and part of what this event, actually Liberty Rising event, you're going to learn some more of those details, but th there's so much more more to it. The, the fake power that the BLM usurps will become real power with the DLM. They will be the all-powerful Every land single czar. right ranchers have now will be gone. The, gone. The, because all of your rights, you, you, uh, ranchers, your, your water rights, your mineral rights, all of this comes because of the initial homesteading laws that gave those that gave those rights to the people and as of right now rancher doesn't need a permit to to, to keep their allotments even though the, the BLM they're being lied to they're being lied to and, and, and they sign things with the forest service and so forth the, the fact that there was a homesteading law that says so, the people claim this land or they start using this land they therefore have now made a claim and it's theirs that automatically has given them the right and there have been Supreme Court cases that have even upheld that so what you're saying is, again, that by putting in a state DLM, we are actually putting into law what the BLM does not actually have Correct. in law. Correct. That's what they're doing. And you talked about no checks and balances. This guy is speaking for the association of counties. That is all of the counties. So the counties don't even have a voice because don't you remember that, that they had this one That election lawyer. that we had where we elected the leader of the association of counties and towns. Do you remember that? So, was it, yeah, so was I it that want, in a video so game let's or just go there. So let's just go there. Okay, so we have county. We have the Association of Counties. What authority do they have? Um, we didn't elect them, right? Right. But we did elect commissioners. All right? Where is the bicameral government in the county election? That's a trick question. doesn't exist. Oh, you answered it. I was going to oh, give away I'm the 5,000-year leap. Dang it. <laughs> uh, seriously. That's what I'm talking about. We have a problem in local government that we do not have the same structure that the founders gave us 
at the federal mm-hmm. level. We have it on the state level, but even that's been ripped away with the 17th Amendment. But we do have right. the, the federal constitution says all states must have a Republican form of government, meaning that the people, that's where the power comes from. So any authority our state governments have government. must yeah. be delegated. And that's why the office of the sheriff is so important, because they were voted in. Therefore, their power comes from the people who delegated it to them, not from the legislature, even though, yes, we have legislative acts that have said the sheriff can do this, et cetera, right. et cetera. But according to a Republican form of government, th- their power comes from who voted them in and delegated their authority, their right to self-defense to them on their behalf. But you talking about that, according to this guy promoting HB 276, Mike Noel and Ken Ivory's bill, you're an anarchist if you wanted to stick to those well, key principles of the Founding Fathers. Let's talk about not being anarchists and what it's going to take. I gave a document to Mike Noel when we were first having this debate mm-hmm. with him over his bill, and he was very furious with all of us. I gave him a document. I said, you must read this. It's very easy. It's called the Baltimore Principles. It actually, I think, the John Birch Society originated this whole thought in the first place. Uh, But nevertheless, it's a correct way of thinking. Lord Baltimore set up the state of Maryland with this structure, bicameral. And guess where the founders got the Constitution from? Lord Baltimore's way of setting up government with bicameral governance to separate the powers and so that it couldn't be centralized. Well, we don't have that in our states. We ripped it away when we enacted the 17th Amendment and allowed the senators to be elected by people instead of by legislatures. Do, are we all following? Yeah. We're so following. It's, so a president is not a good president unless the first thing they do when they're in office is declare the 17th Amendment unconstitutional. unconstitutional. Is, that, is that what you're saying? <laughs> <laughs> well, it is unconstitutional. Yeah. Article and 5 of the Constitution says you cannot have your suffrage, your, your vote, taken away without your permission. The state of Utah voted no on the 17th Amendment, so it shouldn't be able to be without repealing of Article 5. And, and we have that resolution that happened in the last legislative session where our legislature is now on record, non-binding in a resolution, but they're on record that they want the repeal of the 17th <clears throat> Amendment. Right. Utah didn't vote for it in the first place. But that so. gets back to – so why do we get into this little the weeds there? Because HB 276 creates this new division of land management, which this, the state is saying that if you don't support the division of land management, you're an anarchist. What are some of the other words that he used? He was just he was name calling. Yeah. If you don't like what we're doing, I'm going to call you a bunch of dirty and names. You need and to there's place no your way faith. For us to fight back. There's, there, and there's no way for us to fight back. I'm going to go through some of the bullet points of what the bill does. It takes ownership and control of the land. It has that's given the power. HB 276 gives the DLM the power to create all regulations pertaining to the use of land. It's given now this non-elected body is given the power to write laws for the regulating of the use of land. It establishes it's the one that without con, without the legislature creates fees for the access of the use of the land. It has the power to create um, a independent police agency. It has the power to enforce it, and it creates its own internal court system to prosecute you for violating the rules that this unelected body made up. And by the way, it goes into effect in three years. And guess what we get in return for doing that? Maybe. Maybe. A hundred thousand acres. You do? Wow. No, the state. The state. I want under the control wow. of the DLM the that gets to control what happens. How many well, millions of acres are they attempting to control? Right. This is r- ridiculous. Why can't we each get a hundred thousand? It might acres? not, according to Mike <laughs> Noel. It might not even happen. Well, let's pray that it doesn't. Well, yeah, right. That, that's one of the things he said. It doesn't happen for three years, and it doesn't happen until we get a hundred thousand acres. Well, then why not veto it and start over with a good bill? He's like saying, we can fix this. Well, why not just allow it to be vetoed so we can fix all of this horribleness? There's a fix, but they don't talk about it. And that's what we're going to be talking about Saturday, right? That's At this event, 6 p.m., and it's at the Boy Scout building off of 800 North in Orem. And you can get that information and get your tickets by going to the Liberty lineup. You can also go to just Eventbrite and type in Liberty Rising. All right, so. After the break, we're going to talk about the sheriff and how the sheriffs don't believe in the NSA. (laughs) The sheriffs don't believe, at least one sheriff doesn't believe he has 
ought to enforce the Constitution. All right. If you want to join us, 801-254-5855. I'm Cheryl Ann Eager with Ben McClintock and Enoch Moore of Defending Utah. We'll be back after the break. Call connected through the NSA. Complete transmission through the NSA. Hello, NSA. This is the Liberty Lineup. <laughs> and we are here, and we, our names are on the line, right? So uh, this is Cheryl and Eager and Ben McClintock and Enoch Moore, and we have been having a very vigorous discussion about our rights as they're being shipped away, especially, especially with regard to the bill that was put into law called SB 276. HB 276. Uh, excuse me, HB. And... Um, Guys, keep going Here, with this. So discussion. here's the bottom line with HB 276. This is why the power of the sheriff was so important and why it made everyone so upset. Y- you have to think of the future scenario. Okay, here's the use case. When a rancher is out and his cows go on the wrong part of the a land. A tortoise crawls onto your land. A tortoise crawls onto your land, and the DLM comes and says, you got to get off your land now. There's a wilderness here. And he says, no, this is my rights. I have grazing rights. I have whatever. And they go to the sheriff, and they say, hey, this DLM guy just kicked me off my land, or he shot my cow, or whatever. Because tortoise. Because of the tortoise, because because he called it wilderness. And the sheriff says, well, I can't do anything. I mean, I do have full primary law enforcement powers. Except. Except, except for in wilderness. Okay, so that except wilderness is going to be the one thing that is used to usurp 100% power over all land. Every time... They want to take your rights away. They will say, oh, wilderness. Tortoise. Wilderness, tortoise. Gr- We're going to talk about that one some more tomorrow, too. By the way, all those tortoises in Nevada, um, where Harry Reid grabbed the Golden Butte, whatever, uh, Gold Butte. Yeah. Right. Uh, yeah, it's all about now displacing the tortoises, and they have to take them off there so that they can do their big deal with China and with, you know, the, the wind and solar and whatever going on in the Gold Butte area in the name of environmentalism. But they've got tortoises there. Right. Right? So they have to move those tortoises. And guess where they need to move them? Onto the land, the grazing land that the Bundys have. And guess what? They have to get rid of the cows because cows and tortoises just do not get along together. So this is just a perfect example of how wilderness is used. And stupid because guess what? Tortoises love to eat cow pies. Who doesn't? <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know. Maybe we ought to. <laughs> All Kay. right. But anyway, that's just an example totally. of, of what's going on. And now we're going to put into law in three years. It is law, but it's not going to go into enactment for three years. So now we're going to do this so we have department a, 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 of the, – The ability be, now to yeah. be able to overcome this. We can get the pressure on these guys to get them to repeal the bill because they talked about fixing it. So the way we want it fixed is to have every single line deleted. That'll fix the bill. <laughs> and <laughs> I love it. And so right. w- w- let's play that clip again. Uh, which which clip? The all powerful clip. The all powerful, great and powerful laws. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The man behind the curtain. Again, this okay, lawyer from the state. While he's doing that, while he's doing that, I just want to mention because I totally forgot. Um, we have um, a segment sponsor. We need to. Thank very much. This is medical cost share. If we want to repeal Obamacare, you can probably guess that Congress is not going to do it, at least anytime soon. But we do have a plan. We want you to tell your friends and families to opt out now. No tax, no penalties, and it's called medical cost share. Go to medicalcostshare.com slash opt out now. It's not insurance. It's better, and especially better for people in the state of Utah because it is the only um, group that allows Mormons to participate. Yep. How about that? All right. Now, let's get to that clip. The all-powerful the land. all-powerful Oz. The all-powerful Oz of state government wants you to s- stop and listen to him now. Now, I'll come to the core of what I want to say. Inherent, the, the bedrock philosophy of this is that the states are sovereign. This is the United States. We should always refer to our government in the plural. It's not a singular monolithic authority. It's the states. 
But when I hear rhetoric like this that implies the state can't be trusted either, I'm sorry. We have to plant our faith in the state of Utah. Yes, sir, there has to be a DLM. If there's no DLM, if there's no management structure, what do you have? You have chaos. You have anarchy. You have the absence of law, which is the most un-American thing there is. You have to have a structure. You and are, that structure has to revolve around the sovereign state of Utah. Of Utah. If you, you are un-American if you do not support the DLM. You are un-American if you do not support a new bureaucracy that has the authority without being accountable to the people. You are un-American if you don't support this new bureaucracy that can throw you in jail for a rule that they wrote on a whim. That's what, this, that's what they're saying. And these bills, Sherilyn, during the break you said, well, people are saying, well, you know, we need to do this because uh, we're, we're moving in the right direction. Well, isn't moving in the right direction to create a new bureaucracy that can write rules without being accountable? Is it moving in the right direction to create a new police force that can throw you in jail and throw you in a secret court that is unaccountable to anybody? Is it moving in the right direction to create new wilderness areas off-limit to human use? Is it moving in the right direction yep. to do any of these things, to create a regional government? Yep. This yep. is not moving in the right direction. This is l being you're being lied to, being told it's doing something when it's doing the exact opposite. They're saying we're taking our control back, but, yeah, they're taking control. They're increasing control. They're taking away power from the people and creating new government agencies that are unaccountable to the people. This is a move from something that is more of a republic to something that is communist. Right. And then they're calling you an American if you don't support their communist plan. Just because the communist is closer than, yeah. the, than, than the corrupt. Um, so with the BLM now, we have, we have the BLM lying to people, telling them they have to do something. Where now with the DLM, they actually have the authority and the ability to do what the BLM does now. And worse, because you have this new agency that can write its own rules. It's like the, it's like the OSHA, where Congress creates this agency, and then this agency makes new laws that, they, that you have to follow and then goes to a court that is not a part of you know, the yeah. regular judicial system with no appeal. Can I go back to the context of the founders and what yeah. they understood about democracy and government? First of all, uh, in general, the government closest to the people governs best. The only, the only time they believed in democracy was when it was at the very closest level to the people, like in, you know, maybe a neighborhood or something. I mean, where, where democracy really could work. Now, let's look at some numbers here, and you tell me what's going wrong. There were 2.4 million people in the 13 colonies. Our founders were concerned about bureaucracy and big government with 2.4 million people in 13 colonies. Guess what the population of Utah alone is right now? Right about that. 2.9 and more, because these are 2014 statistics. Mm -hmm. 2.943 million people in just one state. And so we are talking about the 13 colonies. Let's just put this in context. You see what I'm getting at here? Yeah. Putting it in context. So now the state is sovereign. Okay, that's like saying that the Constitution of the United States that was enacted over 13 colonies was sovereign and there was no Bill of Rights. So where are our Bill of Rights here in the state of Utah with a population that's bigger? Well, according to— I don't to know if that makes a point, but it does to me. Yeah. We have government that's gone amok. It's too big, and we're trying to have government for more people— than existed when the founders were trying to bring government back to the people. And, and according to that Mr. Smith there, he uh, that makes you un-American. I guess I'm un-American. No, Mark Ward. Mark Ward, sorry. Mark Ward, okay. All right, so um, you're listening to the anarchists, and we're now going <laughs> to The un-American anarchist, un Sherilyn Eager. Yes, and we're now talking to Rick. Welcome to the show. Yeah, thank you. Um, I wanted to say that there's uh, some videos on YouTube you can watch. There's a guy named George W. Hunt, and he's from Colorado. And by uh, 
some weird circumstances, he was able to attend this. Uh, it was a World Bank meeting for the like a uh, World Com- Conservation, and he was. Uh, this meeting was attended uh, by the likes of David Rockefeller, Henry Kissinger, um, Edmund de Rothschild, Maurice Strong from the United Nations. It was all all the top bigwigs, you know, like the Committee of 300 type of people. Um, anyway, so they're basically talking about the, this would be like almost the origins of what you guys are talking about, how they want to take over the land. Um, it's about a two-hour video on the meeting from uh, where they did it down in Provo. This is in 1991. And um, if you were to watch these video, the video, you, it would explain everything. Of how yeah, they probably goes back to the original to Agenda 21 summit they did in 92 in Rio de Janeiro. Yeah, it, it sounded like the right about that, that time. Yeah, this was right after the summit that they had this uh, meeting. And he attended a few of these meetings, and um, it was, they're, they're quite enlightening. And uh, anyway, the guy's name is George W. Hunt. Okay, so we look up George W. Hunt on YouTube, and you, we'll see these is what you're telling us. Yeah. Okay, so we'll... All right, thank you. Yep. Appreciate it. Thanks. That's a, that'll be a good one to, to look up for further research. Sounds interesting. So now... There is also a caller that uh, mm-hmm. wanted us to uh, let everyone know where you can go for the list of Trump appointees. And there, there you, can, you can Google that, and primarily his appointees are... Um, he's named people for the Supreme Court, and I think he's put a few other names out there, and you guys might have some other sources that you have used. But Ballotpedia has um, a whole article on uh, the advisors that are working with Donald Trump. And, you know, it's it, all I can say, it's not perfect, but I am voting for Trump. Okay, you guys can kick me out. We'll just whip you. Okay, let's get back to them. We got some more of the video of that presentation that was given that really show because, you know, people, you've got Sheriff Mack talking about the the constitutional powers of the sheriff, and then we've got Utah sheriffs that give a good talk. They'll tell us that, yeah, we're constitutional sheriffs. If the federal government comes in here and does anything, we're going to just cause all kind of ruckus. And so we want to play that uh, for you, what uh, Sheriff Tr- Jim Tracy of Utah County said. Will Sheriff Jim Tracy of Utah County defend you based on the Constitution? According to him, that's not where he gets his power from. Answered. Let me, let me, let me, Sheriff Tracy, Utah County. Going back to the statement that Mark Ward made, that's part of the dilemma, and that's part of the issue, that's part of the clarification that we have as sheriffs and understand. States are sovereign. Counties are not sovereign. Counties are political subdivisions of the state. My authority as sheriff comes from that document right there, It's under Utah code annotated. There's nothing in this document, the Constitution of the United States, that talks about the office of sheriff. There's nothing in the state of Utah's Constitution that talks about the county sheriff. The county sheriff is an animal, a construct of the legislators of Utah under Title 17, Utah code annotated, Chapter 22. It could be ripped in half and null and void tomorrow by legislative action. Look, look, did you hear that? So he's – Jim Tracy right there is a liar because he swore – he signed a letter from Richard Mack saying that he was a constitutional sheriff. Well, right there he says it's a bunch of baloney. He and so he they're says lying constitution doesn't give me any power. Right. That's what he believes. And so these guys signing these things, saying they're part of the constitutional sheriffs, they're a bunch of liars to get you to vote for them. Because right here, when he thinks nobody's watching, he says he's got no power. Only power he gets is from the legislature. And they just took his power away from him with HB 276. And and so they're saying that because powers aren't specifically defined, because it, it doesn't specifically say the sheriff will obey the Constitution in our state Constitution, right. it must mean that they don't have that power. Right. But a Republican form of government is the people delegating their power when they vote for them. And so you need to look at people, and besides, you know, that they might sign a paper that says they're in favor of something, but look what they're doing. Look what he said right there, that he didn't get his power from the Constitution. He gets his power from the, the, from state, the state legislature. legislature. And, they can, and, they just, and he's supporting the HB 276 and all the powers that it takes away from him and all the protections that you might have if he believed it in the first place.
This has been Ben McClintock and Enoch Moore of DefendingUtah.org on the Naked True segment of the Liberty Lineup Radio Show on K Talk AM 630, where we think right and wrong, not right and left. Make sure to subscribe to the Defending Utah YouTube channel. And also, we'd like to thank our sponsors, Gordon's Carpet Cleaning. If you want the job done right, call Gordon's Carpet Cleaning, 801 368 0140. That's 801 368 0140. We also want to let you know about the editor lady. She will help you publish your book or do any editing for a price you won't believe. Give the editor lady a call at 801 948 3667. That's 801 948 3667. Or email her at the editor lady at gmail.com. We all know that we need to get prepared for job loss, disasters, and just plain life. You need to go to emergencyseedbank.com. That's emergencyseedbank.com. Enter coupon code defend.ut to get your deep discount on Urban Emergency Seed Bank of 23 varieties of non-hybrid, non-GMO seeds, double hermetically sealed in mylar for seeds that last for decades. Emergencyseedbank.com, coupon code defend.ut. Ben Nienick will be back next Thursday from 10 to noon on KTALK AM 630 in Salt Lake City.